This audio presentation of the Sun Papers, number 35, The Kingdom, is brought to you by Christ Consciousness Channel, copyright 2023, all rights reserved. Many who receive this paper are becoming aware of their brothers in Christ, both those dwelling in the flesh and those in spirit. Not necessarily do they actually see them or hear them speak, for that is not essential to one in the Christ consciousness. There is a spiritual knowing that is far superior to what is reported by the senses, even by the soul senses. Likewise, there are many who have either recently entered the kingdom or are able to look in, as it were, and who are more or less aware of the wonders existing there and long for a clearer sight and understanding of what they there see. For as we previously stated, because everything there is almost the opposite of all things seen and known in the mortal consciousness, they are but as babes in understanding in the new consciousness. This cannot help but be when it is realized that all that is seen in the outer world are creations of the mortal mind, that which thinks itself a self, and separate from God's mind. And hence all its creations are built of the darkness of its sense of separation, of living outside of God's love and wisdom, and therefore of not expecting any help from Him. Hence all are built for self, to gratify and benefit self, and are largely selfish. All of man's creations, all of his institutions, commercial, industrial, financial, social, educational, and even philanthropical and spiritual, are built upon and to feed and perpetuate selfishness. Investigate carefully and impersonally, and you cannot but see that this is true, especially when compared with what exists in the kingdom of divine mind. What do we see there? That which strikes us first is the exquisite beauty of everything and everyone, that all are perfect even as the Father conceived them, every soul young, happy, and radiant, and everything devised for the free use and enjoyment of the inhabitants, which means that there is a rich abundance of all good things for everyone always available. No one there ever needs anything, for it is always at hand. A desire for anything is immediately fulfilled. Then, of course, no one needs to ask or take from another, and no one ever owes another anything. Hence money is not known there. Everyone has everything he wants, because all he has to do is to see clearly in his mind what he wants, and it takes shape and substance right before his eyes, ready and perfect for his use. From this you can see there is no selfishness there, for all there are those in whom self no longer is. There is no injustice, for the law of justice rules everyone's consciousness. There is no evil, for it has been learned that evil, sin, sickness, inharmony, and unhappiness are only the creations of mortal mind. And of course one who is selfless never thinks, and thereby creates such things. Does this help you to see how and why man is responsible for the outer world? That it is his own creation, not God's creation? And can you now see what is God's world? His kingdom, your heavenly home? where you can return any time you will by knowing and seeing only the truth and thinking true thoughts, his thoughts, about yourself and about him and his world? For his world, your real home, is here, all about you now, and is clearly visible to those who have eyes to see. But you cannot see it, or your brothers there with your mortal eyes. You must look with your inner eyes, which enable you to see right through outer appearances the soul of people and things. The beautiful part of it all is that they are there whether you see them or not. These others who have found God within themselves have found there a new and wonderful self, a wonderful world, and wonderful comrades in it, a world far more real than the ever-changing one without. Yes, they have found their eternal home, the kingdom of God's consciousness, the same home which Jesus described in his many parables when trying to tell of it to the people of his day and where he went after his earthly mission was accomplished, and where he now lives and works among his disciples who have followed him there. To them he is a very real and actual teacher, guide and friend, who is preparing them for the great day when he will make himself manifest to all his followers on earth, and will bring heaven down to earth to be truly in the midst of men. It is under his direction that we are preparing you, dear friends, for that day preparing you so that you can not only follow him there, but that you can be aware of him and of the soul world now, every moment of the day, can consciously live there even while your body is still in the physical world. For where your consciousness is, 
there you are, and you can center your consciousness in your self-created body of flesh, or in your spiritual body, the one formed in the image and likeness of God, whichever you will, when you know the truth of your divine nature. Our part is to teach you that truth, as you have found during the months you have been traveling with us, and we have now brought you face to face with the fact that you, in your real nature, are a son of God, a spiritual being, and that as such you must bring your human mind to a full realization of that fact, in order that you may lift its consciousness into oneness with your soul consciousness. Now let us show you what that means. You are a son of God, descended from your divine estate into your human soul in order to redeem it and bring its consciousness back into your divine consciousness. You have brought it up to the stage of discipleship, where it is aware of you dwelling within itself and now actually living your life in it and directing all of its activities both in the soul world and in the outer world of the human mind. Your main work now is the cleansing of that mind of all its untrue thoughts and beliefs gained from wrong teaching of parents, school, church, books, and teachers about life, your own nature, and God. All of these teachings have been mainly wrong and almost the exact opposite of the truth found in the real world of the soul, the kingdom consciousness of God's mind, where you as a soul live, move, and have your being, as we have shown above. And finally, those of you who have traveled all the way with us have eliminated from your minds most of the wrong beliefs about self and most of self's creations, so that your minds are now ready to let go and yield themselves over to you and permit you to use them as the selfless instruments you have been preparing and fitting them to be from the beginning. You are therefore almost ready to bring the consciousness of your human mind back into oneness with your soul consciousness, so that the two will be one and you can then be aware of all that is manifesting on the soul plane of expression. But before that can be, we must need further prepare you by making you definitely aware of yourself as a soul apart and distinct from the consciousness of your human mind. You and your integrity as a soul are pure consciousness. In other words, you are that which is conscious or aware of all that comes to you from without, through the avenue of your five senses, or through vibrations which they are not sensitive enough to perceive, such as impressions or thoughts from other centers of consciousness. All of these sensations and vibrations are interpreted to your consciousness through the mediumship of your human mind. But as a soul or consciousness, you are distinct from your human mind, for it serves merely as an instrument to receive and inform you of what comes from without in the world of matter. Yet your mind is in reality an outer extension of your soul consciousness, slowed down to the mental capacity of your human brain. There serving as your agent in the informing you of all things going on in the physical world and of carrying out your instructions pertaining to that world. In that partial and necessarily limited consciousness, your mind grew to think itself a self and separate from you in your soul consciousness. In this fancied separateness, it gradually filled its consciousness with all those wrong concepts and beliefs about physical and mental things spoken of above and which grew so real and tangible in its consciousness that in time they ruled all your thoughts, speech, and actions. But these concepts and beliefs should have no influence over your soul consciousness, only as you let them. The proof is, when you get quiet and still your mind and shut out all thoughts and impressions coming from without, then you are in your pure soul consciousness and are free to be aware of the impressions coming from within your soul. For then, you learn that deep within the soul, there is a higher consciousness and a spiritual intelligence that press against the soul from within, informing you of spiritual things, even as the outer mind's consciousness presses from without to inform you of material things. That higher or innermost consciousness is that of your higher or divine self, a son of God. This enables you to see how you, as a son of God, reach down or out from the center of your being in divine consciousness into the soul consciousness, and thence outward into the mortal mind, giving to your brain its consciousness, which causes it to think itself separate, when it is only the consciousness of God thinned down to the brain mind's capacity to hold and use it. 
It likewise enables you to see that as a soul and with your human mind realizing your true nature and the true world you live in. Your mind is then prepared and should be ready to become aware of the soul world and all in it. In other words, with your mind cleansed of all its old mental creations, all its beliefs and thought pictures of things in the seemingly outer world, and which before it thought so real and important, it should gradually become conscious of the soul or inner and true nature of these things and of the people around you. As we have said before, all true disciples are due to come into this awareness any time, and as a help we urge that from now on you meditate much on the idea of being a soul, trying to throw off all that presses upon your consciousness from the outer world of mind and to retire into and remain back in your soul consciousness, watching and noting all that comes to you there, in order that you may learn all about this new world. You will find by being alert, you will receive ample instruction and direction regarding what appears. But try to realize that what you see will not be as you saw before. You now use a new and entirely different set of faculties, for you are dealing with realities that exist in a new consciousness, manifesting in a different and much higher rate of vibration. In this new consciousness, perception will be of a different kind. In fact, some of you will see them purely as ideas, or as a knowing what they are, instead of seeing anything. This knowing will be far more accurate and real than any seeing of forms or hearing of voices could be, if you can realize it. For in pure knowing is included all that your five senses could tell you and a thousand times more. Some of you, however, if you are psychic, will have these truths illustrated to you in visions or mental pictures. But always seek to know their inner meaning, for pictures are of no value unless you understand their meaning and purpose. This will be given to your mind if it refuses to be satisfied with mere pictures. Naturally, it is the knowing faculty, which is purely spiritual, that should be sought. The other is but an interesting side issue, and may prove to be a snare to entangle you in the joys of the summerland and prevent your reaching the true goal. By persisting, the consciousness will continue to unfold, however, until it reaches union with its source, your divine consciousness, where all is known, and where everything needed will flow naturally and instantly to you. Above all things, try to realize that you are a son of God, a spiritual being, living as a soul in an ideal body, in a realm consciousness called the kingdom of God, which is the real world of being. If you only know it, it is just as easy, and will make you far happier than believing you are a human being living as a self in an imperfect physical body in a realm of consciousness called the material world which is an unreal world that has no existence except as a belief of the mortal mind. We ask you not only to realize yourself as actually living in this ideal soul body and soul world, but that they are very real and are where you would be in consciousness, were you to be released from your physical body or were to die. As your human mind becomes more and more freed from its illusions and misconceptions, and thus becomes able to perceive the truth of the real world of this kingdom. Your inner eyes will open, and you will be seeing and be conscious of living in two worlds at the same time. And do you not now see that when you can rise entirely out of the consciousness of your human mind into that of your soul, and can remain there at will, you are actually in the soul world, just as much as if you had died to the physical world? For are you not where your consciousness is? And can you not see what this means? That by rising into the soul consciousness, you then will be able to learn how to rule all in the physical world, molding its conditions by thought, like unto the conditions you see in the real world, and which you now wish to obtain in the outer world of the mind. But of this, we will speak further in the next article, when dealing with the subject of consciousness. At present, meditate much upon what is stated above trying daily to enter and abide in your soul consciousness, so that you can become wholly familiar with the reality of the soul world and know it for what it is, your true home, your father's house, where we have been leading you all these months and which you have finally reached. Consciousness We showed you that by rising into your soul consciousness and becoming accustomed to it, you can learn how to rule things and conditions in the physical world, by means of thought, in the soul world, everything is formed by thought, even as in the physical.
But while in the physical world, thought directs the use of the physical material that has first to be secured and out of which the desired thing is built, in the soul world, in both the astral and the mental realms, the material is naturally of an astral or mental nature, which is altogether under the control of thought and can be formed and shaped by merely thinking it into any desired form and condition. In order to give you an idea of our meaning, but not asking you to accept what is stated other than it is claimed to come from a little girl spirit attending on the spirit side of life, the seances of a noted medium, we quote from a book entitled The Spirit World by Mrs. M. T. Longley. We will now relate some of the teachings and statements of Nanny, told in her artless simplicity, which gained credence for them in the minds of all who listened to her tales. Relating the instances of her wonderful school life in the soul realm, she told of the manner of work and teachings therein. Lessons are both subjective and objective. The pupil must first be taught to perceive the thought clearly in the mind, picture it mentally to himself, and then produce it in the outer atmosphere. Said the little prattler, We can make a lily or a rose, but we must first think of it so we can mentally see the flower. Then we must learn to concentrate the mind on that and nothing else. We must learn about vibration and how to harmonize with the vibration of the rose or the lily, then how to gather the forces of the flower from the atmosphere. The teacher shows us how by her own work, she gathers a lot of mist out of the atmosphere and works it with her hands till it gets thicker and more like substance. At first it is thin and finer than steam, but she works it till it grows more substantial and just as she wants it to fashion into form, all the time breathing on it and thinking of the color she wants, pink or red or some other color. She keeps her mind all the time on the appearance, texture, and hue of the flower she wants it to be while molding it into shape. Her breathing on it helps to make the color and the perfume of the flower, and she does the work in a minute or two very quickly. No one can tell it from a real flower. We children have to learn all this, but we like it. It's real play, and sometimes it's funny too, for we don't always remember to think rose or lily or whatever it is we want, and the thing becomes broken or out of shape and fades right away, and then the teacher says we haven't concentrated properly. When older, she told of other methods of concentration and work. The teacher said the children must learn to produce something like a picture or an article without drawing perceptibly from the vital forces outside themselves. For instance, to simplify matters, the teacher caused a sheet of porcelain-like substance to appear before the class, something for them to concentrate their minds toward. Then they were each in turn to think some object on the sheet, one selected to produce a red rose, one a bird, one a star, and so on. Nanny said for some time she had trouble. She tried a star and it was wobbly, a flower and it was broken, a bird and it was upside down, although the colors of each were good. The teacher said Nanny let her mind wander, did not fix it closely enough on her subject. Nanny told that as the atmosphere contains the ethereal essence of all substances, it is not difficult to gather them for use, and they often gathered color and sweets from flowers and the atmosphere to form sugar balls and other shapes for the delectation of the children. She said they sometimes teased Tella or someone else to make us a nice ice cream or pudding or cake all white and shining. And the culinary artist would proceed to do so, not with pots and pans and flour and eggs and things of that sort, but simply by knowing how to manipulate the atmosphere, draw from it the essentials needed, and bring them to the right consistency and degree of perfection. The cake, cream, pudding, or candy would be made and enjoyed to the satisfaction of the guests or children. She said, and other spirits told us the same, that persons coming into the spirit world with the sensations of hunger or starvation are cured of their hunger by attendants or caretakers who know how, drawing essentials from the atmosphere, manipulating and adding personal magnetism to them, and producing an appetizing piece of meat all cooked ready for eating that never vibrated in the body of any animal, but which looks as if it did, tastes the same, and does better work for the partaker who cannot tell that he is not eating a bit from the choice part of a well-fed animal. Remember that the above tells what is taught children who live in the soul realm. Later through the power of concentration and clear visualizing, they learn to create objects at will, 
without manipulating with their hands. One watching would see them take form right before their eyes out of the atmosphere. As the ethereal essence of all substance is contained in the atmosphere, one who knows that, through the power of his will and his directing thought, can draw forth whatever he needs. Try to realize that if children on the higher planes of spirit are taught these laws, old souls should know them and are probably employing them in their work on those planes, which means that you, who are disciples of Christ, and who are old souls and live on the highest of the soul planes, should know perfectly how to use these laws, and are now trying to teach the right use of them to your brain minds. That you do know how to use them is plain from the fact of your human reflections having misused this knowledge in the past in the creation of conditions which are now reacting upon them because of the selfishness which motivated them in such creation. The time is now here when you are calling upon your human selves to rectify these mistakes by willingly returning to your soul consciousness and from there creating the outer conditions which they now know alone will bring peace and happiness into their lives and into a world sorely distressed on account of the mistakes of the past. You have been shown how to do this in paper number 25, in the Way Out article. We are now explaining why, when you do as instructed, results must follow. For the soul realm is the real world, and the real creating is done there. Anything or any condition created there by thought and held in consciousness as being finished must outmanifest itself. Then it behooves every disciple of Christ to begin now to create carefully in his human mind, filling in every detail, the true and permanent conditions he sees in his higher consciousness and which he wants to outmanifest. And when all is clearly visible and you know it is finished, Go about your business in the serene assurance that the condition thus created now exists. Mentally see it as actually being so and yourself happily a part of it in the outer world, naturally allowing not the slightest doubt of it to enter your consciousness, and it will soon outmanifest and establish itself in your life. If you do all that we have here stated, the results must follow, for it is the law, and the law never fails. Bringing the kingdom down to earth. In view of what has been stated, it should be seen that now that the way has been shown, it becomes the duty of every conscious disciple of Christ receiving this paper to apply the above instruction to the rectifying of present wrong conditions in the world of men's consciousness. This instruction has been given you to use, not only to adjust your own affairs to the true state of being you see existing in your higher consciousness, but to help your brothers in spirit bring the full light of divine mind down into the consciousness of as many human minds as can be quickened to receive it. With our help, your human mind has been quickened. It now knows that the real world is not what the physical senses report, but is the perfect world of the soul realm. Therefore, it must cease recognizing the outer world as real, must cease believing you have any part in it or in the conditions manifesting there must refuse to let such conditions enter its consciousness, knowing that you are a son of God, a spiritual being, dwelling in a perfect world where such things do not exist. This must be evident to everyone who reads, and hence you are now ready for definite work. Go back and read carefully the above, and then what follows, until you gather the full significance of it all, and you will see wherein your real duty lies. The time has come for you to begin actual service as a member of the Brotherhood, for as a disciple you are actually a member. You have entered its consciousness, therefore its help is always available. Christ's love has now become your life, hence his wisdom and power are ever yours when needed in his service. His service is the helping and blessing of others. Knowing this, then your first duty is to keep your consciousness clean of all untrue thoughts and to carry in it only those that pertain to your real self and your real world. In other words, you must learn to live in your soul consciousness, which is now the Christ consciousness, shutting out all that would push through from the outer mind. And your next duty is to refrain from voicing anything about outer conditions that is not good and perfect, no matter what others say to the contrary. You simply know the truth, and let others believe and say what they will. For while your ears may hear, your mind need not listen. You must train your mind to observe strictly this rule. By thus always knowing the truth, the truth that only God's perfect world exists, 
peopled only by his children who love him and are doing all that they do to please him. You are carrying about a great light that will illumine the world consciousness far and wide, quickening and lighting many other minds, and thus gradually driving out all darkness in the consciousness of your community. For can you not see that the greater this knowing, the more powerful becomes your light and the more far-reaching its radiance? Imagine every soul receiving these teachings becoming such a light, going about letting it shine into the hearts and lives of all they contact. Think of the mighty influence they will radiate. But remember, they are doing nothing, only serving as outposts or channels through which the Brotherhood of Christ is pouring the great light of Christ's love down into the consciousness of men, driving out the darkness of ignorance from which was born their sense of self and separation. This is our part, dear ones, and there is no greater work that we can do. Link ourselves through our minds with the consciousness of our brothers in spirit, who are serving under our blessed leader and Savior Christ Jesus. And this we must do now, that we may quickly become perfect in our knowing. For we are soon to engage in a mighty struggle with the powers of darkness that are seeking to gain control of the whole world of men's minds, accounting for the increased darkness manifesting at present in world conditions. In fact, the battle has already begun, and before it is over they will seemingly have gained almost complete control. But all we have to do is to know who we are and of what we are a part, that we are the light, and can the darkness prevail against the light. Therefore be not anxious about the future, for the future must be of the light, when the darkness is all dispelled, and that will surely be, for it is so ordained by our loving Father God. In the meantime, all that need concern you is that you are always walking and serving in the light of His love and all else will be taken care of, for he will take care of his own. <laughs>